Hi guys, it's Kelly Lanavola here and I am super excited to be featured on the Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine blog for their card cafe. And so today I have a couple of cards for you. Um, I already cut pre-cut my card bases and then I have some Canson watercolor paper I'm going to be working on. First thing that you want to do when you're going to be painting a watercolor background is you want to paint it down, uh, paint it down. We're already off to a fine start here, folks. Tape it down. <laughs> I'm using um, just artist tape to hold my paper down to a board. And I've picked out just kind of like a rainbow of Distress Oxides. You can use Distress Inks, regular oxides, Zig Clean color markers, whatever you want. And I just smush them down on a Ranger Craft mat and I'm going to use that as my palette. To start off with, I'm going to be doing the first card with a wet on wet technique, which basically means I used a large flat brush, you saw, to um, put down clean clear water on my paper, and then I'm going to switch over to a number eight round brush, and I'm going to use that to drop the pigment in. I love rainbows, love me some rainbows, um, and so for this first card, I thought that it would, would start off nice and easy. Um, all colors are going to go together nicely. There isn't going to be any that are next to each other that are going to mix funny. We'll talk about that later. Um, so I just went from uh, Salty Ocean to Peacock Feathers, Twisted Citron, Fossilized Amber, and then Picked Raspberry. So you can, as long as it's wet, you can keep going back in and adding pigment to make it um, darker, uh, bolder color as much as you want. As long as it's still wet, it'll keep moving and mixing. If you start to get some pooling, like I did here, um, I, you can just go in with a paper towel and blot up the um, extra water. Anything that's pooling, it is going to pull up some of your pigment, so you may have to go back in and add more pigment, depending upon how dark you want it. Because of the way that I put down the water, watercolor, it's only going to spread to where the paper is wet. Um, the dry paper acts as like a barrier. So, but it gave me really um, what I refer to as manufactured lines, and I wanted something that was going to look a little bit more organic. So I just started pulling parts out um, of the sides, just creating like some shapes on the edges. And then I'm going to go in with a number two round brush and do some spatters. The way that I like to do mine is everywhere. Like the more spatters, the merrier. Um, because I like that little bit of blue in my picked raspberry, and I like a little bit of picked raspberry in my peacock feathers. Uh, if you don't, you can certainly keep it more concentrated to one area, but I just kind of went crazy with it because that's how I like it. Plus, it'll help kind of um, give some, I guess, some of those more organic edges that I was talking about, depending on where it lies. For the second card, I so I sent the first one aside to dry. For the second card, I'm going to do a wet on dry. So the paper is dry, the paintbrush is wet. And this is going to give me much harder edges, um, which means they're, they're not going to be soft, they're not going to blend into the paper. This is going to have a very blunt edge, which I don't mind. I actually think that it's really pretty and dependent upon um, the look that you're going for, which this card in particular, um, I'm just using some outline images. Uh, but so I'm just going to keep adding things that I like, adding colors that I like, building them up, um, kind of mixing them around. Now we are using um, some different colors right next to each other. Here I'm going to drop in some yellow. And you're going to see that up there in that right hand corner, so typically you don't want to mix colors that are complementary. And up there in that right hand corner, it kind of starts to get a little ugly. <laughs> it starts to turn a little bit brown. Um, but that's why we have the paper towel. So once I realize that it's turning brown, now obviously um, I've already made the card, so I know it's happening. But um, I didn't realize it at first. So now once I see how, how brown it's turning, I'm just going to go in there with my paper towel and blot it up. It picked up a lot of that twisted citron. So I'm just going to pick up some more color and put it back in. No harm, no foul. Um, basically, anything is fixable. If you've never seen any of my videos, um, I never start over again. If there's an error, then we figure out a way to make it work or fix it up. Um, a lot of times, you know, um, crafting, just like many of you, I'm sure, is the way that I de-stress. So I'm not about to sit down and stress out about a card. That's It's not happening. 
because um, there's a way to fix it. There's always a way to fix it. So again, doing the same splatters. Moving on to the third background. For this one, I'm again doing the wet on dry, um, but I'm going to just do um, a, set, a little bit different with the edges. So I'm gonna put all my colors down just like before. And now mind you, as I'm putting these colors down, I kind of have an idea in my head about how I want my stamps to go. Um, but you certainly don't have to. If you are, if like your mojo's missing and you just want to have fun with color, sit down and, and paint a couple of these backgrounds and then figure out a way to make it work later. Especially with floral stamps, super, super easy to, um, to make these type of backgrounds work. So again, um, just adding those colors where I, I think that they'll look prettiest. This one I knew was going to be a center focal point. So that's where I'm concentrating most of my color. Um, I'm going to do the splatters again, but first I'm going to, I've cleaned off my brush now, and this is just clean, clear water. And I'm going to put it down just outside of the edge of my color. And then I'm going to touch the water to the edge. This is going to give me some soft edges and some hard. Um, it's just kind of like a happy medium between the wet on wet technique and the wet on dry. Um, because it will run into those wet areas just like the first card that we did, um, but it's still going to have some hard edges just like the second card that we did. Now, bonus, I never waste any of this Distress Ink because I paid for it and I'm not wasting it. So what I like to do is with the leftover Distress Ink that's on my board, I spray it down with a bunch of water and then I just take another piece of watercolor paper and dip it in. And then I just keep dipping it until I'm happy with it. Here, you can see at the top there, got kind of ugly with my purple and my green paper towel to the rescue. Um, so it was fine and I just kept dipping it until uh, I was happy. You can dry it in between and go back and dip it some more. That's totally fine. One of the things that you can do if you're getting some color blocking, like I do here at the bottom, just like that solid block of purple, is to go in with um, just clean, clear water, spatter that on, and then soak it up with a paper towel. And you can see it gives you like these bleach spots, which are super cool. You can also do that in any of the backgrounds that we just did. I just chose not to. The other thing that you can add to a background, which if you do follow my channel on YouTube, you know that I'm currently um, just completely in love with this. And that is um, add perfect pearls to your background. So perfect pearls set when they're mixed with water. So this isn't gonna come off on your um, your hand or anything like that. Once you mix it with that water or spritz it with water, you're set. It's good to go, it's not going anywhere. All of my papers were a slightly larger than a card front because I needed to tape them down. So now I'm just going in and trimming them down to an A2 size card, except for that one in the middle because I got a little trim happy. And so it's slightly smaller. But that's okay, we'll figure out card design later on. We're gonna get into the stamping right now. So I am using my Mini Misty and some Intense Black Ink from Simon Says Stamp. Um, this is Copic Safe, that's why I chose it. And then for this first one, I wanted to show you that if you own a bouquet stamp, these the, that will totally work. When you're stamping on watercolor paper, sometimes it's a bit rough. So I had to stamp it a couple of times. Now, for the rest of the cards, I did not use bouquets. I created my own with masks. So you saw I have that post-it note um, tape there. I just stamped right on it. And then I'm just going to trim this out with my scissors to create masks so I can build my own bouquet. Totally not necessary. I've had people tell me it's kind of overwhelming. In order to make it not overwhelming for myself, I pre-stamp it. You can see there, I stamped it down, I held it up into the light so I could see that it was going to match my background nicely, and then um, I'm going to just start stamping and masking. When you're masking things, basically you want to stamp from the front to the back. So whatever you want in the foreground, you're going to stamp first. So for me, it's this large, it almost looks like a peony. These are all um, from Simon Says Stamp Flower sets. Um, so I'm just mixing and matching, you know, whatever strikes my fancy. So I'm going to mask that, and then I'm going to stamp the next thing, which is going to be a leaf. So I'm going to keep doing the same exact thing. Don't mind my hair, um, because I'm trying to see what I'm doing, um, and I'm rocking this top knot like nobody's business. If I am off of work and I am just staying at home crafting, 
I am not under any circumstances doing my hair. So the, the top knot is life for me when I am at home in my house, especially on a day like that was, which is my hair is naturally curly. Um, and so I'm not even like, I'm getting out of the shower, I'm putting it up in a top knot and forgetting about it because ugh, it's frightening. But anyway, so once all the stamping's done, I'm gonna start removing those masks, which I love one layer cards. So this is like totally magical to me. And then this card is basically done. So we're gonna add just a few things left to it. I did the same thing. I brought in some uh, poinsettia and some roses, which are also Simon stamps. And um, then I stamped the second background. This is how this looks. Remember that bonus piece that we did? Those flowers were cut from that bonus piece. So that's why I do those things. I also use them for hand lettering. I like them for backgrounds. Um, there are just all kinds of things. I'm actually gonna make a bonus card with it. For this card, I do prefer Copic markers, but you don't have to have all of the Copic markers. And this is a good way to kind of like dip your toe in the water if you're not comfortable with alcohol markers. And if you own gray markers, you can shade pretty much anything. So all I'm doing for this card is adding shading in gray. I did speed it up a little bit because there's gonna be full blown Copic coloring. And this video is already really long. So basically I started with a C3 and then moved out to a C5. I'm adding shading from the inside of the flower out because of the way these flowers are shaped, they're cupped, which means the centers would be darker. I'm also adding a little bit of shading to the stems where they come out from underneath and then at the base of like the buds. And then I blended that out with a C1 and was happy with the way that it looked. So those gray markers are your friends. You do not have to do full blown four color combinations for every color, buy all the Copics. It's, it, you don't need it. Especially if you're just starting out and trying to see if this is gonna be for you, try just getting the gray markers. Um, so now here, this is how I typically do my Copic coloring. Um, I really, really love the way that it looks over the watercolor. Um, I have never had any issues coloring over Distress Inks or Distress Oxides. Uh, I don't know if this is technically mixed media, um, but I do this all the time because I think it's beautiful. So, from with these flowers, I'm shading from the center to about ha midway up the petal, and then I'm shading the tip of the petal toward the center, leaving a, a large area of highlight in between. Why am I doing that? because if you add shading to the center and you add shading to the tips, it's going to give your flower a very round appearance. Those petals will start to look like they are turned out and are lifting up. And just as we gradually get darker, you can really start to see it take shape. Um, you wanna make sure that when you're doing this, you're not getting what I call a wall of color so I'm using just the tip of my marker and um, very light pressure to do flicking motions. Um, I This is something that is learned. It took me a long time to learn it. So just keep practicing, don't give up. If yours doesn't look exactly like you want to, color another one. Um, I'm sure that we're always our worst critics, guys, always, always. And so I'm sure it looks much better than you think that it does. So just stick with it. Um, because you can only improve. So out to the darkest color, I'm only adding just a little bit of the darkest color. Your, when you're coloring, it, like especially with me, I'm coloring with four colors, but let's say three. So you're gonna have a highlight color, a contrast color, which is for your shadows, and then a mid-tone. The majority of your flower is gonna be your mid-tone. You should just have a very little bit of a highlight and a very little bit of a shadow. So the way that I operate is I start with my lightest, I go out to my darkest, from my darkest back into my lightest. I feel like I get the best blend this way. But we're talking about that wall of color. So when you're doing the flicking motions, you can see um, so they aren't the same size, they aren't the same length, um, because it gives it a much more organic feel. If you do all of the shading as just one height, one length, from the center, it's going to create this wall that does not look very natural. 
we don't want that. So try to extend those lines, shorten them up, vary, vary the, the lengths and the widths. Moving on to this rose, yellows are hard to shade. They just are. Um, you Sometimes it's very difficult because it's such a bright color to find anything that's going to really work with that. Um, I know other people have said like you can shade with a color's contrasting color, or I'm sorry, it's complementary color. So yellow's complementary color, if the opposite color on the color wheel is purple. Uh, I don't like the way that yellows look with a purple shading. So I tend to go with either orange or um, a more gold tone, which is what I opted for this time around because of the um, shade of that poinsettia. So all I'm really doing is just adding a line of color uh, where it's going to be the darkest. So it's anytime an, uh, one object is sitting on top of another, there's going to be a shadow. So right up against that poinsettia where it's sitting on top of that rose, we're going to have a shadow. Then as we go out, because those petals are all folded on each other, in order to get some dimension, we need to have that contrast color in there. Then the edges, like what's sticking up, is going to catch the most light. So that's where your highlight's going to be. So I'm just blending these out. As I um, do the second layer, I am adding a little bit more color further out. But typically when I do the first layer, I'm really just adding a line because I tend to be heavy handed and want to add a lot of dark. So in order to conserve a highlight, I've just learned for myself to leave basically a huge highlight. <laughs> so I can't just eat it up with all of the other markers. So I'm just going to show you the uh, violets that I used to shade the rose because it was exactly the same as the large one. And then we're just going to move on to the leaves. So I picked two different colors. Um, for the leaves because I have two different styles of leaf, but also it makes your bouquets a little bit more dynamic. So here I'm just, I'm kind of shading this almost the same way that I did the poinsettia. I am where there's cast shadows or where one object sitting on top of another, I am adding shadow there, but then for the actual leaf that you can actually see um, that isn't tucked up under something, I'm doing the same thing. I'm adding shading from the top and the bottom to give it that round appearance. For the poinsettia leaves, we're going to switch it up just a little bit. They are drawn very wavy um, because that's how poinsettia leaves naturally are. So we want to accent that wave. So basically what I'm doing is anywhere that it dips in, I'm adding a little triangle of color. And I'm still going from my lightest out to my darkest, my darkest back out to my lightest. And when I'm adding the little triangle in the darkest color, it certainly is not as large as when I do it in the lightest color. But then I'm going to blend all those out and it's really going to give it some dimension and some shape um, so that it doesn't look just flat to the page. All of the Copic coloring is done at this stage and then I always like to go in and add some white details. So for this poinsettia, I added it to the same end and then I added some um, little white highlights to the um, roses just where it would be the brightest. I also did this on the... Uh, the um, I did the white highlight part on the card that um, we just stamped down and I told you was basically done. The only other thing that I did to the image was um, just to add those highlights. I like to outline all of my images in uh, black markers because I like a bold black line. So I did that. That's where we're at. And then we're going to work on the sentiment. This um, sentiment set is called You Matter by Simon's the Stamp. I'm stamping in um, their same black ink. It's a great ink for sentiments. It's super crisp. Um, and it just has so many wonderful, encouraging sentiments, and I love it. So this one says, you are pretty amazing. This one, um, you can see those little highlights I added there, says, you are the best. And then on the last card, it's going to say, thank you. Um, and for these, what um, the white parts I added there, I just added some dots in the center of the flowers. So I just have a cute little thank you here. Then... Remember how I told you I cut that panel a little bit too short? Well, we're going to fix it. So I have some white fun foam here, and I'm putting that on the back of my piece. I don't, I just told you, I don't, <laughs> I, I'm cheap, and so I want to get the most bang for my buck. So I had two pieces here. Um, one, they were just slightly too small, so I made them make friends, and then, bam, I totally got a whole panel covered with white fun foam. So I'm just going to pop this up on a white card base so that the size is um, an A2 size card, so five and a half by four and a quarter. 
So I just adhered that down with some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. And then we're gonna look at accenting these. So a couple of different ways that I like to accent my uh, one layer cards is um, these Nouveau Drops. So I'm using white, um, but they have. I also have black, they have clear, um, you can do it with glossy accents or actual enamel dots. Here I have some clear droplets that I'm using and I like to adhere those with glossy accents so that they stay nice and clear and shiny. For the last card, I am just doing some sequins to accent that sentiment, um, just so that there's some shine. Here's the bonus card. So um, I just popped those flowers up. I may uh, do a video on this on my own channel at some point, um, but yeah, that's why we don't throw out anything at all ever. So I just wanna say thank you so much to um, Scrapbook and Cards today for having me. Uh, and thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope you learned something and we'll try this and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.